Our Coopers have been around for quite a few years now, and it's a very generational thing, you know, Pastor right. Bruce Monk, and then now Pastor Sam, Pastor Kathy, doing amazing things. Actually, we have two very special guests joining us. Very special guests. Now, Pastor... Bruce Monk and Pastor Barrett Ruakiri. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Great Real to have joy. you. Great to be with you. Yeah. Cool. So uh, how are you enjoying conference? Um, yeah, I think it's pr pretty special this year, especially the atmosphere. Mm. You know, really, when you look at a conference, 3,000 people know what we'd say world-renowned speaker, mm. advertised, but people are coming out because they want God. It's amazing. Yeah, it's been pretty awesome, uh, just people rallying to, to Auckland and you know just finding a way to get here so yeah great atmosphere and yeah. uh, I hope everyone's listening online if they can get here tonight come yeah along. yeah exactly now important question for you Pastor Bruce with uh, yourself and Pastor Helen here at conference uh, who's looking after Molly 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 is uh, Pastor Bruce's dog uh, if you didn't know <laughs> we can leave her for five hours five hours Aww. okay okay so you got a bit of time right. got a bit but of time she frets after five okay. hours oh okay. she's a little bit hungry <laughs> yeah. yeah all right she hides in cupboards she's an <laughs> emotional in she's a girl really emotional no, no, all right all right okay me. okay <laughs> any, any comment on that no no, no okay, comment okay. so you know COVID-19 with lockdown, it's affected everybody in different ways, you know, around the world. What would you say your first reaction to what was going on was? Were you shocked? Were you sad? What was your first reaction to lockdown and COVID-19? Yeah, um, for me, uh, yeah, I was pretty shocked and, you know, we were sort of in a rhythm on what we were, were doing um, both in, in a workplace as well as in church. Mm -hmm. And so it was a... To, to just come to a, a, a halt, then I had to quickly think about, you know, okay, what does this look like? How is it impacting me? How's it going to impact my family? And so right. then start thinking on that that sort of platform. Yeah, yeah, because everything happened so fast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it did, did happen very fast, but for me, I can't say I was shocked. Right. Um, might be my personality, I'm quite pragmatic. So therefore, whatever you have to face, you've got to face. And so that's probably how I approached it. So, uh, wow. Yeah. And uh, what good do you think has come out of this whole situation, COVID-19, the pandemic? Have you seen anything good come out of what's happening around the world at the moment? Um, for me, I, I, I got a word uh, right at the beginning is that God was going, going to awaken his church. Right. And so I got it. So uh, I can say that's how God spoke to me. But then when I look... Uh, I think it was two days later, I was listening to something by T.D. Jakes, and he said, God's about to awaken. Wow. And I thought, oh, wow, that I'm in tune. Yep. You know, and now I look and I think that's really what's happening, is God's awakening his people, getting their eyes off the circumstances, really being intuitive to trust the Holy Spirit to really speak into their life. Mm. Wow. So that's... Uh, yeah, we uh, obviously, Pastor Sam, started this year with full and overflowing. And exactly. so, you know, when we come to this halt, I'm sort of trying to work out how, how does that look like now in this circumstance. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, so we, some of our uh, social services that were delivered, like our early child care centre, you know, we had to work out how to, how is that going to impact our parents and the children that, that attend those centres. And then we've got all our SENS clients and how, you know, how do we wow. keep connected to those SENS clients who, are, who, who um, yeah, we've taken on. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it, it was a great time to be able to reset things, though. Yeah, for sure. Right, right. I mean, there's a lot of adjustments, right? It's a big adjustment yeah. period. How do you see things like moving forward into the future as the world grapples with this new way of doing things? Um, I hope we change. Um, I think, you know, God, the enemy has one plan, but I think God always has another. And God's plan is always superior. Yeah. Uh, when you look at uh, definitely the whole technological side of the church, what we can do, how many people we can touch, how we can stay connected. Um, I think, I pray we advance into that with more diligence. I don't think it takes away from the human contact. Yeah. I think we still need that. So I hope we don't lose that. But definitely, I think it's changing the way we can reach our world and even plant churches. I think we can be uh, wow. more sort of diligent in planting churches through live stream and uh, just seeing the impact of what that could do. 
Yeah, for me it was um, just about uh, creativity and, and so I was just thinking about and dreaming about well, how we can extend the, the kingdom uh, through COVID and yeah, there's been some incredible things with the churches and our movement. Um, you know, there's, they've been able to quickly pivot around delivering services uh, online and we've, they've seen a growth so I'm really looking forward to what's ahead for us. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. so a lot of good things have come out of the situation and uh, naturally there's a lot of crazy things happening in the world right now. Is there anything you'd say to people who are trying to make sense of everything that's happening in the world at this time? Yeah, I think we've all got to approach it. I, I, yeah. I, I do follow the political world. I, I like watching CNN, Fox, BBC. Right. So I like staying connected with what's happening. But I think one thing age teaches you is you've got to, especially as a Christian, you've got to be very careful. You're not actually allowing your emotions to be governed by your environment. Wow. And we as Christians have, a, I think, a higher view of what's happening in the world. I think uh, people who are listening, if they listen to Steve Graham's uh, ministry this morning, yeah. would just really see that we need to have uh, see through the lens of Christ yeah. rather than just perhaps through the environment we're in. I think it would be really helpful. For me, that's that's where I want to be. I wear glasses because my eyesight, so do you, Ed, yeah, yeah. is a bit blurred. And so I've got to have a lens. I think we would need the lens, uh, uh, yeah, see through the lens of Christ yeah, wow. so that we get a better vision of what's happening in the world, not a blurred vision. Yeah. Awesome. Any thoughts about it? Yeah, I agree with Bruce. <laughs> Great thoughts, great yeah. thoughts. It's yeah. very yeah. good. He's got age over me, you see. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, everything, he's catching, everything he's catching up. Yeah. Though, you know. <laughs> nice. So, um, you know, with the world in lockdown at the moment, um, yeah, not a lot of people able to attend such things like this. You know, there's social distancing in place. There's people um, in lockdown in their homes. We're very privileged to be able to do uh, what we are doing yeah. here yeah. right now. So. How did you guys spend your time in lockdown? You know, did you give yourself haircuts? Did you uh, take up the art of finger painting? Did you uh, start a TikTok account? Yeah, maybe you're on TikTok um, now. What do you? What did you do with your time? What did you do there? Yeah, so uh, uh, for for our bubble, there was only three of us in our bubble, and Bella, our dog, uh, and so a lot of the time, we uh, or I I took the the advantage of connecting with all the ex churches that um. Uh, engage with and so it was just helping them process things through for their congregations that are nationally and so that was a real privilege to be able to catch up with them uh, talk about some of their uh, issues that are around facilities for them to dream as well and uh, you know they're, they're looking for uh, sort of leadership and guidance around COVID and how, how to engage there and keep connected to their congregation so a lot of that was doing that uh, Ursula, my wife, she was running the parenting program. Uh, during lockdown? Yeah, yeah so wow. she, she does parenting program Credible Years. And so during lockdown, uh, she had to educate herself around Zoom uh, facilitation. Uh, so she became the health expert, really, wow. uh, and, and <laughs> doing parenting program online. So that was really incredible. Um, but for, for us as, a, as a husband and wife, transitioning out of church leadership, it was just a great time to reset and just press into God and spend a lot of time praying. Yeah, Amazing, amazing. Um, so for me, I, I look, my world adjusted really quickly. I think uh, I've cancelled something like four international flights wow. because um, that would normally be my life. Um, I think I've slept in my bed the, for the longest period in 25 years. Wow. 25 years? Wow. 25 years. Wow. So, that's, um, so in a way it was an adjustment. adjustment. Yeah, Molly was, <laughs> so Molly, Molly was Molly sleeping was in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Super attached. <laughs> the bed warm. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I think in our lockdown I did most of the cooking at night because uh, I just enjoyed that. So, um, but both Helen and myself got into writing books and wow. so that really became our project and um, I've always, I, I sort of attempt to write book, uh, a book, uh, but then I find an excuse because I'm travelling and I push it away, but I had no excuse and so through lockdown I was able to do the first draft of a book and Helen has written a devotional, 180 page devotional. Hers is a wow. greater effort than mine. I think mine's about 40,000 words, wow. probably about 200 pages that's equivalent to. Hers is 
a 180 day devotional wow. and I think 120,000 words wow. so um, she worked harder than I do but I'm more <laughs> hyperactive than her okay, and okay. so I've got to break break out every now and again and take Molly for a walk. <laughs> right, right. Fantastic. Very cool. Any new hobbies? You pick up any new hobbies over any new hobbies over lockdown? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Uh, no. no okay. Just reading. All right. Annoying people. Annoying people. <laughs> Which I'm good at. Yeah, 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 I can imagine. Um, so uh, recently we heard about uh, Fiji. Uh, Fiji's the latest nation to join the Equipers family. And uh, I know when uh, we announced new, lo- lo- new locations, uh, a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. And, and could you tell us a little bit about some of the work that goes on behind the scenes and uh, how long it would take before the doors are actually opened? I think the supernatural thing that a lot of people aren't aware of with Equipers is every international church we've planted is actually led by a national. Wow. So we're not sending... Kiwis to plant churches, God has actually brought almost like the nations of the world to us and we're able to train, develop them and now they're going back to their nation and so with with uh, Fiji, again just typical Tiko and uh, Shelley are just wonderful people pastoring a significant church in New Zealand but God has grown an awareness for Fiji uh, because of Tico's heritage. And so now we're able to put our weight in behind that, just simply because that's on his heart. And I, I just see that's really our pattern around the world. God gives us a leader. Then if we can put the church in the leader, then we can plant a church. Yeah. We don't strategically go out and say, we're gonna plant there, there, there. God strategically gives us someone and we, we see the church in their heart. So that's the background work. Always got our eye open wow. for a person who could actually uh, touch their nation. Wow, so a church is in a person before it's in a nation. Yeah. To, to me, that's the reality. Yeah. You've got to have it in the person. Yeah. Otherwise, wow. uh, for instance, myself and Sam would be running around. He has no hair left anyhow. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, you, you'd run yourself ragged right. because you were trying to fulfill a strategy that you could never do in your own humanity. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but if you can put the church in the person, we then become the equipper of that person and we train them. In. Yeah. And, and would we be right in saying that every church around the globe is led by a local? Yes, yeah, by a national. A national, yeah, wow, yeah, wow. Yeah. So, so um, everyone, oh, apart from um, Mexico, which is led by Bob and Chona, but they right. actually have been in uh, Mexico for 28 years, I think. So they, probably they I asked them oh do you see yourself dying here and they say yep yep this is our home now oh, so wow. yeah. okay. Wow. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, you know, there's a lot going on. Always always a lot going on. What else is happening? What else is planned for the Equippers network? Where you go? Yeah, uh, so question. yeah, we, we've got um, what's really cool to be a part of is that we we have these conversations around who has a church in them. Um, you know, sometimes we, we throw up names on a board and then we talk about them and wrestle them through. But really, um, what, what God's doing, not only just in Equipus churches, but also in our movement, is pretty incredible. And so I, I, I'm, you know, I'm part of uh, what's happening in Whakatane. And so we, what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish sort of like a framework. And um, so when we plant a church, we've already done all the pre-thinking around that plant what resources they'll need, how, how, how that, uh, the stages before a, a flag goes up at, at the front of a building or facility. So yeah, all, all that's been worked out prior hand and so it just takes the weight off the, 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 the intending pastor to, who will lead the church um, to focus purely on connections and relationships and, and building that, the, the confidence in the gatherings. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So, so internationally, um, my dream was always initially 10 significant churches mm-hmm. in 10 major cities around the world. We have now gone beyond that. We probably are reaching close to 15 or 16 mm-hmm. significant churches. That's not the number of churches, but significant churches. What I see with the significant churches, they're like a beachhead 
with a leader in that church who's got the ability to multiply and take that nation. So our, our real uh, prayer is God gives us what we would call that apostolic leader who's able to really get a vision to plant churches and reproduce in their nation. So that's what we just need to keep, in a way, provoking, watering, stimulating and uh, building. So I would like to think we, as a Quippers family, our part of reaching the kingdom of God around the world, we could reach 100,000 people by the end of 2000. Uh, 2025 wow. so, oh, which is a space. which has got to be a miracle yeah. Yeah. because we can't yeah. do that by ourselves yeah. mm. but that's our prayer and uh, you know you, it's got a real degree of the supernatural in it yeah. so yeah. Yeah. for sure well amazing things are happening yeah. around the world and here in our very own country right. of Aotearoa thank you both so very much for your time and thanks for having yeah God bless you both Enjoy. and the rest of yeah. conference good. you guys you are guys. good yeah, doing a great job thank you so much yeah.